I'm Don Adams. I'm the sixth generation of the Adams line. My father was Sterling, my grandfather Irvin, my great-grandfather John, and my second great-grandfather Lucas, my third great-grandfather Samuel. Samuel was born in Boston and he was a veteran of the Revolutionary War. So he's one of the few men that were veterans of the Revolutionary War that uh, came to Bedford Township, lived here for a while, and is buried in Bedford Township. Uh, I've been active as a volunteer at the Bedford Library for 20 plus years and have had um, a lot of pleasure working with other volunteers and the librarians. The volunteers that worked on this project reviewed everything in our collection and we reviewed it, reviewed it in the thought of how can we best present it for the patrons that come in to do research. One of the main uh, collections we have are abstracts. Uh, many younger people may not know what an abstract is, but today when property is bought and sold, uh, we use title insurance. But up to around 1950, there were abstracts. And those abstracts are very valuable for uh, people to find uh, information on their ancestors because it starts right back to the original purchase from the federal government, the people that we know as patent landowners or pioneer families is another name. And we have three drawers back here full of abstracts, some of which are originals that have been donated, but most of them uh, were uh, copies that people allowed us to, to uh, put into our collection. One of the other collections is the family history. And we have three drawers of family histories. And it's all listed by alph alphabetical name. Uh, those are indexed also. So they can go into the index binders and find if one of their ancestors are in that collection. The next collection is our general collection. The general collection includes principally uh, newspaper clippings. Um, but also things like uh, meetings of organizations. Um, the, uh, one of the other minutes we have is of our Historical Society of Bedford. And that we keep current right up to uh, current years. And it's available uh, for patrons to, to do research. Of course, our the catalog item of, of publications are on the shelves uh, and those can be located uh, through the library's catalog. We're fortunate in Monroe County that we have a genealogical society of Monroe County that uh, transcribes a lot of statistical data, uh, census records, marriage records, birth records, death records, and as opposed to the uh, microfilm uh, collection that has all the census on it, if people use that to find their ancestor, um, it takes hours of time because it's not indexed. If they go to the Bedford 
or the Monroe County Census records, those are all indexed. And within seconds, they can find the, the ancestor that they're looking for. We separate Bedford's census records from all the rest of the 15 counties or townships in Monroe County uh, because that gets the most use. Now one other feature to the census records is that starting in 1820, there is a census of the whole county into one record. And we have that 1820 through 1880. Now, the first census that was done um, by county uh, in um, Monroe County was 1820. The first census that included every member of the family was in 1850. So, if you want to know your grandmother's name going back to prior to starting back from 1840 on back, only the head of the household is listed. And that typically is the, the male uh, of the, the, the father of the family. But then, uh, as I said, in 1850, from then on, every member of the family is... Uh, is listed. The Bedford Branch Library is fortunate to receive from Ray Francis um, the photographs that he had framed and hanging in his Francis Food Grocery Store in Temperance. They are all early photographs of the Bedford Township. For example, the one here that you see is looking east on Temperance Road. At that time, it was called uh, Main Street. And you can see the ruts in the dirt road. The road going north and south is Lewis Avenue. And that was not paved until 1923. The uh, next building is still standing in Temperance. It was originally uh, the second post office of Temperance. The third uh, photograph is of Temperance School when it was uh, uh, constructed in 1902. When I was in the 10th grade in 1946, that building caught on fire and was completely destroyed. Prior to the fire in uh, 1946, there was discussion of consolidating the 10 school districts that we had in Bedford Township into one uh, township district. And the fire um, created a need to uh, advance that thinking about a consolidation. So the year after the fire, in June of 1946, uh, we voted the township uh, to consolidate. All except District 6, was, which was Banner Oak School, they elected not to uh, vote and consolidate at that time. But two years later, they did vote and uh, approved the consolidation into what we now know was Bedford Rural Agriculture School. In 1955, the township board changed that name to uh, Bedford Public School, which it is today. And this year will be the 70th graduate, 12th grade graduation of Bedford Public School. One of the nice collections we have at Bedford is microfilm. And in some cases, we can go back 
to the 1800s for the Monroe Democrat, the Monroe Commercial, were all predecessors to the Monroe Evening News. And um, most people use these for obituaries. And obituaries in the 1800s in the newspapers are very difficult to find compared to today where they have an index uh, indicating what page you go to for obituaries. You have to look through the whole roll of microfilm, particularly looking for community news, which might have a line or two of obituary information. But we have the Monroe Evening News right from the very beginning. Now on the Toledo Blade, uh, for years we started with 1983. Uh, one day I got a call from uh, the library and asked what would I like to see as a, an, an addition to our collection. And I said I'd like to finish out the blade. Well, they found out that <clears throat> that was going to cost thousands of dollars. So they said, what is the second choice? But currently, uh, the library is adding to our collection 10 years at a time. For example, we're now up to 1973. Uh, and people have really enjoyed using that. A uh, lot of the other uh, microfilm is, like I mentioned earlier, the census records are on there. And then we have some church records uh, and some vital statistics, even out of the Toledo churches. In fact, one day I found my own wedding on, on the microfilm. That's how old I am, I guess. As I mentioned earlier, the volunteers uh, indexed all of our collections and these are three ring binders uh, with the indexes and to help patrons find what they're looking for we even have an index of the indexes. Number one is the abstracts. Number two is the archive room. Those are very special collections. In some cases, original township records. Uh, like I found uh, for Banner Oak School, uh, there was a meeting in 1846 where they voted to raise $120 in taxes to build a schoolhouse. And those records, which should be at the Township Hall, but they're not, fortunately, they were donated to the library. Uh, on three, uh, we have the Dennis McClough collection. Uh, Mr. McClough was supervisor for several years and a lot of his handwritten records uh, are in that, uh, that collection. Number four is the family historians and the general file. Number five is uh, the microfilm uh, indexes. And number seven A and B are the obituary. Then we come into volume eight, which is our photo collection. The photo collection is indexed and gets a number of uses from the patrons. And when I have a, give a tour of the building, I always ask one of the patrons to uh, pick out a photo that I will go in the back archives room and uh, find that photograph for them. So I'll ask for a selection from the, the index. The first Bedford fire truck. And what's the folder number? And 
Um, it's from 1945, folder number 29. And the, photograph 184? The number is 184. Okay, 29, 184. From here we're going into the archives. This room is kept under lock and key and is only accessible by a librarian or a volunteer to access things that patrons uh, call for. And to look for the 184 We have a picture of the first Bedford Fire Department in 1945, or fire truck, not fire department. But the first fire department was organized uh, in 1945. And this truck is still maintained by the fire department as a parade uh, vehicle. They don't use it to fight fires anymore. One of the things that are maintained is the uh, yearbooks of Bedford School. And we have um, a full collection starting with 1947 after the schools were consolidated in 1946. And that's the 47 book. In 48 book, that's my year. I'll have to show you my picture. There's Mr. Conant. There's Don Adams when he had hair. <laughs> but these get uh, a lot of use by patrons is one of the most common things that they ask for uh, when they come into our history room. But it's a full collection, plus we do have a few uh, yearbooks from the junior high years, and then we also have a collection of Lammerville and Temperance yearbooks every one that was ever published. For example, Lambertville was published in their first graduating class was 23, but the first yearbook was 1936, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. They skipped 44, 45, 46, and 46 would, would have been the last year prior to the township consolidation. And in, on the temperance side, we have uh, th starting with 37 uh, through 46, means again the last year uh, prior to consolidation of the 10 school districts that we had in Bedford Township. Then we also do have a few uh, from Whiteford Township in our collection for people to use. We'd like to add to this, but it was quite a challenge to uh, get uh, every year, for, for example, in, uh, oh, what year was it, 19, oh, it was 2003, uh, the, the faculty that was responsible for yearbooks uh, retired and he didn't pass on that Bedford uh, Branch Library gets a copy every year. So um, by the time we found that out, um, uh, they were sold out. So we had to wait for a, a donation and uh, one of our uh, Patrons bought it on eBay and donated it. So that completed our collection right on through uh, 2015. The library is not in position to accept a lot of artifacts. That's the, a museum's job, not the, the library's job. 
But when we have an opportunity to get something that really helps us with local history, uh, it's hard to resist. Particularly something as heavy as the cornerstone for the Bank of Temperance that opened in 1903. Now, unfortunately, they didn't stay in business very long because they went out of business in 1922. But the, this is a photograph of the building, and today the business that's in that is a survey company. Uh, but it's still standing, and you can see on the east or west side of the building the original brick of that um, bank building. But that's the cornerstone right there that we ended up having donated. It was quite a story. Uh, our historical society used it for a stepping stone at Banner Oak School for a number of years. And when I found that out, I said, oh, come on, guys. we got to do something different than this. But the history of that was that when the, that portion of the building was changed, uh, someone was uh, given a cornerstone. And it went to a Lambertville um, a resident and he had it as part of a paving stone. He finally donated it, uh, and fortunately, we, we have a bit of temperance history with that piece. One of the other artifacts that we have uh, accepted into the collection is a wooden um, candy or nut tray that was used uh, by the Stearns family at Christmas time. The Banner Oak School, which was originally called Lord School, but the name was changed to Banner Oak in 1926. But during the Civil War, uh, Mr. Stearns hung a flag in an oak tree that was on the school grounds. And because of that banner and that oak tree, uh, it became known as Banner Oak School. Well, one of the Stearns salvaged a part of that tree, that oak tree, and uh, made a uh, candy bowl or nut bowl and placed for a candle on it. Um, we received a call from a lady in Tempe, Arizona and said that she had this artifact and she would like to see us have it here at the library. And the fact is so closely associated with one of the old schools uh, in Bedford Township, um, it was accepted and um, is now part of the few, uh, the collection of a few artifacts that we do have. One of the uh, collections that we have at the Bedford Library is a Native American artifact collection that was gathered by Ted Beck. Uh, Ted's been a friend of mine for years, and he graduated from uh, Temperance High School in 1945. Ted and I were at a, a church dinner at one time, and I went over to talk with Ted, and I said, Ted, one of the things I've always been interested in is your collection of Native American artifacts. Do you still have that? says, yes, I still have it. And even though we have eight children, none of the children seem to be interested in it. So I've been trying to come to a decision as to where it should go. And I said, Ted, you know my hobby is uh, a volunteer at the Bedford Library. Yes, Don, I know that. 
but uh, I still haven't decided what to do with the collection. But uh, I said, Ted, talk to me anytime you're ready. So one day Ted come walking in the library with these uh, collections and uh, said, that one is, I'm decided, can be donated now. The larger one, I still got to think about that. But then we had a program here at the library about archaeology and particularly for <coughs> digging for native art artifacts. Um, and Ted was there that night and I said, Ted, are you ready to make a final decision? Yes. So I was able to announce at that program here at the library that Ted had decided to donate his total collection, which was made up of artifacts found almost exclusively in Bedford and Erie Township. When Ted Beck donated his native artifact collection to the Bedford Branch Library, <clears throat> he brought in a third display case, a smaller collection. And he said, Don, this is your personal copy. Um, and besides, the tomahawk that's in that collection belongs to your family. My brother had taken my father's collection for show and tell to Temperance School in 1942, we think it was. And he failed to return it home. Um, most of the smaller arrow points probably were taken by schoolboys and put in their pocket and they walked out of the school with that part of the collection. But the tomahawk is a big piece and if they had put that in their pocket it would have created a bulge and so they didn't think that it was worth the risk to, to take that. It was the last piece left in the collection and Ted keeping uh, a record of these things kept it for those years. And he says, Don, this is your father's tomahawk. I says, Ted, you don't know how hard I've been looking for that piece. Uh, we even had uh, people bring show and tell to our local history uh, society meetings. And one of them was a tomahawk the same color of my father's. And I sure had to look at that awful hard. But all of a sudden, after 72 years, the collection, the, the tomahawk that I was supposed to get as the oldest son came back home. And was I happy. <laughs>